For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and still found others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landlord. This were hardness work only one hour, he said. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work in the heat of the day. The landlord replied to one of them, Friend, I am not treating you unfairly. Didn't you agree with me to work for a standard wage? Take what is yours and go. I want to give this last man the same as I gave to you. Am I not permitted to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? Brothers and sisters, maybe some of you were here today. You are struggling. You are carrying a burden in your heart. Because you think that uh, you are being treated unfairly or unjustly, maybe in your workplaces, uh, in your offices, uh, or maybe uh, you know you are telling yourself I was treated unjustly or unfairly by my friend or by my relative. If at this point in time you are crying out justice, you are crying out fairness, friends. These words are for you. This message is for you. We just hope that the Lord will speak to us. Amen? We just hope that the Lord will, will touch our hearts. And we just open the blood gates of heaven and allow us to understand the message that He wants to impart us. Yes, oh Father, here we are. You know the concern of each and every one of us. You know the needs of our God of each and every one. You know the burdens we are carrying right now. Maybe some of us who are here are crying out fairness, justice. Maybe some of us who are here, Lord, who are struggling about how people are treating us. What we believe we're going to today is the day that you're going to liberate us. Because you're going to speak to us, O God, through this message. You're going to speak to us, O God, today. Even right now, Lord God, as I stand before your people and before you, I'm not worthy. But I pray that you touch my lips, touch my tongue, Lord God, that we be able to deliver a word, Lord God, word that will bless your people, word, Lord God, that will nourish us, and words, Lord God, that will change our lives forever. Yes, oh Father, may this be a life changing message upon each and every one of us. Holy Spirit, come and speak to us in this presence. In Jesus' name, Amen.
the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Give me give a clap of praise to God. Hallelujah. Let the person beside you, God will speak to you today. God will speak to us today, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters. <laughs> Can I ask a question? How many of you who are here have felt envy towards other people at least once in your life? <laughs> Can I see a raise of hands? <laughs> All of us, isn't it? <laughs> All of us uh, uh, have experienced and have felt envy at least once uh, in our lives. Uh, if ever there are people who did not raise their hands, uh, maybe uh, you get out from those uh, people, you know? Because these people are not uh, human beings. <laughs> they might be coming from uh, other planets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I, I'm sure you agree with me. If I say to you that if you are a human being, at least once in your life, you have felt envious towards other people, right? And um, from the message that uh, we have uh, read a while ago, you know, there are five groups of employees, okay? Five groups of employees. So employee group number one, we're hired at six in the morning, until 6 in the afternoon and they were contracted to work for 12 hours. Okay? So that's employee group number 1. And employee group number 2, they were hired at 9 in the morning until 6. So that's 9 hours. And employee group number 3, they were hired at 12 noon. Now, so that's from 12 until 6, that's 6 hours. And employee group number 4, they work for three hours, because they started at three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, from three to six. And employee group number five, the last group, they work only for an hour. They started at five in the afternoon. And uh, you know, any friends, if uh, you pay attention about the landowner or the employer in the past days. You will really agree with me that the landowner was really crazy, isn't it? He was he was so illogical. You know? He, he was he was so absurd. <laughs> and uh, please understand that uh, the only group of employee who had a contract was employee group number one. That's the only group of employee who had a contract. And what was their contract? They're going to receive a denarii for the day's wage. So if you're going to translate it in a Australian setting, so that's around $18 an hour. And uh, for 12 hours, you're going to receive $220 for the whole day. So that's their contract. Okay? And you know, for employee group numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5, they didn't have any contract, my friends. There was no verbal or written contract. And uh, for group number one, they relied on contract. But for employee group numbers two, three, four, and five, they only relied on trust. Okay? They relied on trust. So they said, I trust. I trust that you're going to pay us from the goodness of your heart. So that's the only thing that they hold on, you know, their trust to the landowner. They said, we trust that you're going to pay us the right amount from the goodness of your heart. Brothers and sisters, you know where this message is going. Amen? You know where I'm going through this message. And I just want to ask this question to you. I just want to ask this question to you. What kind of relationship do you want with God? Is it a relationship that insists on what you deserve? 
or a relationship that trusts in the goodness of His heart. I repeat, what kind of relationship do you want with God? Is it a relationship that insists on what you deserve or a relationship that trusts in the goodness of His heart? Friends, brothers and sisters, it is better to live in trust. Amen? Than to insist on what you deserve. And uh, you know, it's really funny when when we think about the the, the passage we, we, we just read, and we really conclude that uh, that Anna was you know it was crazy, it was it was absurd, it was ridiculous. You know, he could he could have called the first group employees in secret in his office, isn't it? He could have called them. Okay, those who started at 6 in the morning, will you please come into my office and receive your pay? Okay? So here is your $20, $20, here is your $220, and then after uh, giving them their pay, they could have, the, the employer could have sent them right away, isn't it? And then call again, employee group number two. And then give them the $220 each. You know, and then send them right away and allow them to disappear completely in the area and call employee group number three. But uh, what was disturbing with the friends was that the landowner called first employee group number five. So you're not wondering why did the landowner call first employee group number five? Okay, employee group number five, come on, come here. And uh, it was a surprise of these employees that they received $220. And, and uh, some of them were, you know, telling the, the employer, oh my gosh, this is too much. We don't deserve this amount. Imagine we just only work for an hour and you're giving us this amount. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, I can just imagine with the friends that this uh, group of employees they're, they're still smelling friends, you know, they're, they never perspired, they never sweat, and yeah, they, they're still good, <laughs> they're still fresh, and here they're receiving $220 for an hour. Oh my gosh, where can you find that, you know? <laughs> where, where in the world can you find, you know, receiving a $220 for an hour? You know, when uh, employee group number one saw what was happening, they started to become uneasy. Oh my gosh, this, uh, this employer is giving $220 to those who just work for an hour. How much would this employer or employee would give to us? If he's giving them $220, maybe he will give us, you know, I was multiplying 220 times 12, that's around $2,600. <laughs> and some of them, you know, they're, they're, they're telling themselves, maybe the employer will give us $2,600 because you can just imagine he gave $220 to those who only work. My dear friends, when it was their turn, you know, when it was their turn to receive their pay, it was to their surprise because they only received the same amount, $220. And you know, they started to complain. Okay? They started to grumble. You know if that happens here in Australia? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's World War III, isn't it? <laughs> in the workplace, that happens. And, uh, you know, they started to grumble, they started to complain. And uh, they told the landowner or the employer, Oh my gosh, we spent 12 hours under the heat of the sun. And we only receive this amount. How come that you also give the same amount to those who just work for one hour? We would have received more. You know? That's what this employee belonging to group number one were telling the landowner. We would have received more than what they received. They started shouting, this is unfair, you know? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is unjust, this is foolishness, this is absurd. 
This is ridiculous. You know? And uh, yeah, he started shouting at the louder. Why is he doing that kind of treatment? Then the landowner said, Friends, we have a contract. Isn't it that you agree to receive $220 for 12 hours of work? Receive your pay and go. Receive your pay and go. And friends, this is my question. Why is it that the landowner called first? The, the FIFA group of employees are going to number five. I believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that God wants to bless people around us. God wants to bless the people in front of us. God wants to bless the people at our back. Yeah. God wants to bless the people in broad daylight in order to train our hearts. Trust in the goodness of God. Amen? That's a purpose. Why God is blessing those people around us. Maybe some of you, you're, you're, you're asking this question, why is it that my neighbor is so blessed? You know? Why is it that my office mate is so blessed? You know, he's been promoted uh, time and time again, and here I am, I'm more qualified than him, I'm more qualified than her, but uh, he's always been promoted. The reason why, dear friends, God blesses people around you. It's to train your heart to trust in the goodness of God. Amen? To train your hearts to trust in the Lord's goodness. I'll give you a scenario. For example, it's Christmas party. You know, Christmas party, especially in the Philippines, isn't it? We, there are a lot of gifts, eh? To be won. And, uh, one of the door prices, you won one of the door prices. You know what? When you open the box, you, you, you're very happy because you want a t-shirt. A beautiful t-shirt with Hawaii printed on it. <laughs> printed at the front and printed at the back. And straight away, you went to the, to the bathroom and changed your clothes because you're so excited to wear the t-shirt the that you won. In the party, and uh, you show it to your office mates. Hey, won! And uh, you're really happy in winning this T-shirt. And uh, yeah, as so the party went on, and towards the end of the party, isn't it that at the end of the party, that's the time when they announce the grand prize, right? The grand prize, and you are not ready, Lorna. I hope that you'll be able to win the grand prize. And you even remind the Lord, Lord, I'm praying to you every day. <laughs> you even remind the Lord, I'm reading the Bible every day. You even remind the Lord, I'm attending the feast. You know, without let us. Every second and fourth Saturday of the month, I'm attending the feast. I hope that I will win the blood prize. And lo and behold, many friends, when the MC announced the winner, unfortunately, it was not you. It was the office day. The boom. And you know when your office mate opened the envelope? Oh my gosh. It was the surprise of everyone because it's a free holiday to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at your t-shirt with a printed Hawaii. <laughs> and you look at the you know the envelope where your <laughs> office mate was holding a free trip to Hawaii, and then you start having the conversation. You're no longer happy. Because, you know, your mind is already focused on what your office made. And you started to, to question that, Lord, why him? Not me. Now, sometimes you do that, isn't it? Why him? Not me. And to make things worse, brothers and sisters, to make things worse, your office made, you know, never go to church. You never pray. You never read the Bible. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, when he swears in the office, he even use five different languages, you know, to swear. And here you are, you're trying your best to become holy in front of God, in front of the people, but you are seeing 
No, your mouth is my meaningless. And you ask the Lord, Lord, why him? Not me. And I can remember scenario, it was your 15th birthday. No? And, uh, and uh, every time you celebrate your birthday, your sister will always give you a gift. And uh, usually it's a simple gift, like uh, uh, a box of chocolates, uh, uh, a lot of ice cream. But uh, because you're celebrating your 15th birthday, it was a different gift. You receive vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so it's more expensive, right? And you're happy, you know, when you receive the vacuum cleaner, wow! <laughs> Vacuum cleaner and immediately use the vacuum cleaner to clean the house. Wow! And you said you told yourself, I can now retire my own vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and after an hour you went out of your house and you saw this, you know, brand new car parked in front of your neighbor. And you ask your neighbor, whose car is that? And then your neighbor said, That's a gift from my sister. <laughs> during my 15th birthday. <laughs> and uh, again, you started staring at your vacuum cleaner <laughs> and started staring at the brand new car and made your friends the happiness and the joy that you were experiencing before started to fade away. And you know, you, you start to ask God, Lord, why Him, not me? You're crying out justice. <laughs> this is not fair, Lord. I've been praying to you every day. But how come that the blessings are not coming to me? Another scenario, you know, you have a classmate of 20 years ago. You know that your classmate will always copy his assignment to you, word for word. <laughs> will always copy the assignment. And uh, when uh, you have an exam, you will always copy the answers. Test papers and uh, yeah, you will always allow him to copy your answers because you want him to pass. And then after 20 years, suddenly you met it's Anna, and you saw him driving this Mercedes Benz, you know, <laughs> brand new Mercedes Benz 2013 model. And when you saw your car, you're just driving a 10 year old Toyota Corolla, <laughs> and you started to ask. This question the Lord, Lord, <laughs> you ask the Lord, Lord, why him? Brothers and sisters, you know, grace is his kindness. Grace is really his kindness. You know, when we talk about grace, we really like grace, isn't it? We love grace, especially when we are the recipient. Grace. We praise the Lord when you know when we are the recipient of the grace of God. But when we see people receiving grace from the Lord, from the top of our voice, we shout justice, fairness. This is the pride. <laughs> That's why the, the passage when it first is very powerful. When you try to read again, the passage is very powerful because it differentiates justice from grace. It really differentiate justice from grace. And if you try to reflect on the, on the passage, you can really conclude that grace is scandalous. Why? Employee group number one were really scandalized you know, by the generosity of the employer when he gave you know, the same amount to those who just work for a month. So brothers and sisters, Yes, when we say grace, falling into the love of other people, we cry out justice and fairness. We say, this is the pride. I want justice. I want to receive what I deserve in life. And uh, friends, brothers and sisters, during the last three talks, I've been sharing to you about the prodigal son, right? Do you remember? About the parable of the prodigal son? This parable is very powerful. And uh, it really shows 
you know, how how powerful grace is. It shows that grace is really scandalous. You know? So you know the story. The younger son, he got his uh, his money, his inheritance from, from the father, and uh, half of the father's wealth was given to the son. So if the father's wealth was one billion dollars, he got five hundred million dollars in his pocket. He went straight away from home and you know, he spent all the money the nonsense living, the cheap prostitutes, you know, the womanizing, the drinking, and uh, to his other friends. And we you know that uh, a time will come when he ran out of money, isn't it? And he was forced to work in a piggery farm in order to eat the food of the pig. And he came into his senses. He said, I'm going home. I'm going home. Because in my father's house, the helper of my father, the servants of my father are eating good food. I just go home and just tell my father, Father, just consider me as one of your servants. All of the rest. So I can just eat good food in the house. And you know, my dear friends, that uh, when, uh, when the younger brother arrived home, you know, he was crawling in front of his father, asking and begging for mercy and forgiveness. And we know the story, right? That the father immediately threw a party, you know, for the son. The father immediately, you know, prepared a banquet, prepared a celebration, prepared a feast for the son. And this is the problem, my friends. When the elder brother was already going home, he went to work, you know, starting at 6 in the morning until 6 in the afternoon. He went to work in the field, in the vineyard. And when he was already going home, he was surprised. He was surprised to see what's happening in the house. That from a far distance, he saw different lights coming from the house. A yellow light, a violet light, a purple light, you know, a pink light, you know. Black light, white light, coming out of the house. They started asking this question. What, what's happening in the house? Is there a party in the house? And when he got closer, then the elder brother, the friends, started to hear rap music. You know? <laughs> and they were dancing and marrying. You know? inside, the, inside the house. They were shouting and singing. And he was so amazed, he was so perplexed, what's happening? And when he got home, he saw this big truck, you know, a catering truck. <laughs> and uh, he asked one of the servants, what's happening in the house? And then the servant said, your, father, your brother is bad. Your brother is bad. You know, the elder son said, my brother is back. My brother is back. The brother of mine, you know, who, who spent half of the world with my father is back with a party in the house. <laughs> you know, the brother started yelling and he started shouting, this is unfair. You know, this is unjust. This is poisonous. This is ridiculous. You know, my brother who, who spent half of my father's wealth, and when he came home, my father threw a party for him. This is ridiculous. My dear friends, we can really understand the feeling of the elder brother, right? He's the most logical character in the story. And you know, he went straight to his father. And he told his father, Dad, what are you doing? I think this is wrong. You know, my brother, who just spent all of your money, how of your wealth has been spent to nonsense living. And when he came back, you threw a party for him. This is not right. This is not just. You know? This is not fair. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Scandalous Place. You know, 
things are not fair, things are not just, things are not logical when grace appears in the picture. Amen? Things are not just fair when grace appears in the picture. And right now, my dear friends, I don't know what's happening to you. Maybe you belong to employee group number one at this moment. Or maybe some of you, you are the elder son at this moment. And you're crying out for justice. You're crying out for fairness. Your heart. But this is what I want to tell you, my dear friends. Don't be envious. Don't be envious if a decision of your life you belong to employee group number one or you are the elder son. Don't be envious. Because a time will come, my friends, a time will come when you will also become employee group number five. Amen? A time will come when you will also become the younger brother in the house, you know, receiving this reckless and extravagant and scandalous grace from our God. Amen? A time will come, my dear friends, at a different season of your life when you will also be receiving this scandalous, you know, and uh, reckless and extravagant and abundant grace from God. Amen? Amen? Can we give a couple of praise to God? Hallelujah! <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the message for the day is very simple. Don't insist on what you deserve. In other words, don't get what you deserve. Insist on the grace of God. Insist on the scandalous grace. Receive what grace delivers. Receive what grace pours out of the heart. Amen? Receive the love of God. Don't insist on what you deserve. Trust in the goodness of Christ. Amen? Don't insist on what you deserve. Trust in the goodness of Christ. <clears throat> Before we will end, I want to share to you one last point. And uh, I know this is powerful. Remove from your heart, brothers and sisters, the poison of entitlement. What do you mean by that? Like, for example, because I am the eldest in the family, so I shouldn't be respected because I am the eldest. All of what I am saying should be followed, you know, should be obeyed because I am the eldest in the family. Or because I am the leader of the group, I should be respected. Or because of the fact that I work harder, because of the fact that uh, you know I work longer hours, then I deserve more reward. Remove the poison of entitlement in your heart. Brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes when when we see the grace of God falling into the lap of other people, we try justice, you know, we try out fairness. And we, we say ourselves, this is not fair. This is not right. This is what we want each and every one of us. And all the things that we are enjoying in life right now. Your, your houses, your cars, your jewelries, your, your uh, uh, stable job, your family, your friends, everything we are enjoying in life right now. God has given those things not because you deserve it. But God has given these things to us out of the goodness of His heart. Amen? Amen. That's the reason why God has given us all these things. You know? Is it, is it because we deserve it? But because God is so extravagant in His love. God, in His grace and His mercy, you know, is pouring out upon us. Yes, we are enjoying all these things in life. Not because we deserve it. 
But it is because of His grace. Because of His standing of grace. You know, I've been standing before you for more than a year already. And uh, sometimes I, I, cannot, I cannot help but ask this question to myself. What have I done, you know, to deserve, you know, this, this task that God has entrusted? What have I done to merit, you know, this opportunity of sharing God's love to you? I am here with your friends standing in front of you, not because I am qualified, not because I am better than you, you know, not because I am good looking. <laughs> Maybe that's true, right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm here in front of you because of the grace of God. Yes, my dear friends, it is because of the grace of God why am I able to do these things in front of you. Sharing the love of God. You know, sharing to you is message. It's all about His scandalous grace. Amen. You know, last uh, Saturday and Sunday, it was uh, a YFC count. And uh, it was headed by uh, my son. Well, he's here. He was the team leader of the camp. It was a very successful camp for the youth. You can just imagine 25 youth, I think. 25 youth uh, uh, participated in the camp. Uh, and yeah, I, I, was, I was so happy with the friends. You know, you know, seeing my son you know, leading the group. And you know, when, when we visited the camp, uh, oh my gosh, from a distance. Uh, the leaders of the group were praying over my son because he will be the next speaker of, <laughs> of the camp and I just can't help but thank the Lord and ask this question, Lord, why did you choose us? Why did you choose our family? What have we done, you know, to merit this opportunity of serving you in this part of the world? And again, I cannot think of anything good in your face. It boils down to the scandalous grace of God. Amen? It all boils down to God's grace. So brothers and sisters, today, if ever you're, you're crying out for justice, if ever you're crying out for fairness, don't insist on what you deserve. Don't ask for what you deserve. Trust in the goodness of God's grace. Amen? Trust in the goodness of God's word. Again, maybe, yes, yeah, some of you, you're, 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 you're crying deep inside you. I want you to go to the Lord and ask Him that He will give you the grace you know, to really insist on asking that scandalous grace Go to the Lord and ask Him to praise. He will give you the strength to trust the goodness of His name. Amen? Don't get what you deserve. Trust in the goodness of God's name. Amen? Can we give a clap of prayer? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Can we all stand up, my dear friends? Where are you? Can we? Can we sing our song of you, Psalm 1, the last song? And as we sing this last song, brothers and sisters, can we just reflect on the grace that God has poured into our lives? That scandalous grace. Jesus was the one who did it. But he gave his life on the cross. His death on the cross was a scandalous death. Died on the cross for you and me so that we will be able to receive his life and his salvation. Died on the cross for you and me so each and every of us be able to receive his scandalous grace. Yes, oh Father, today we are here before you, O God. 
Let me just ask the Lord that you can fill our hearts with the bring right now. Pour out your grace, Lord God. Pour out that extravagant and reckless grace. Pour out that scandalous grace, Lord, in our hearts. Allow us to swing, Lord God, in your love today. Allow us to swing in your grace. Hallelujah.